Hello YouTube. So today I wanted to present to you a quick video on different types of AR-15 uppers throughout the years. First up will be the 601 style of AR-15 upper receiver. Notice that it has a slick side here along the right side of the receiver. There is your ejection port door. Now this is a modern ejection port door with a little hump there that kind of pushes it out against the lower receiver. For spacing purposes, the early ones did not have a bump. They just kind of had this plate here that was not elevated at all. Uh, but, you know, you did have the little hole drilled there for your optic mount, if you will. And you can kind of see a forging mark there. And then you would have what we call today A1 style sights. These sights would be rotated for windage. Um, if you used a bullet tip or a tool, you can kind of see the little spring-loaded detent there. And if you notice there, the arrow points to the right. So if you rotated this clockwise with a bullet tip, then you would achieve right windage or windage to the right. And, say, and then obviously you would go opposite to the left if you wanted to move the sight to the left. These were not elevation adjustable on these early rifles. So kind of wanted to give you an overview of that. And then obviously the other side here had your little flat tip area there for installation of that rear sight. And I believe this was a retro style Brownells upper. You can kind of see if you notice there in the shadow, there's kind of a step down. Actually, we'll get it from the other side here. There's a step down there for the original style front detent if you're using the old school uh, push pin style. So this, this upper will work for either the modern push pin with a detent in the lower or the older style push pin uh, with detent balls on the actual push pin itself. So kind of give you a year range on this. These were used from basically late 1950s, early 1960s into, uh, into the original Air Force models of AR-15 M16s and they remained in use in the Air Force. And I want to say probably the Army a bit, but uh, don't quote me on that. But uh, the Air Force had these for quite a while with the flat side here. So they work just as well. There's no performance issue, uh, you know, a little less features, if you will. And then obviously you'll see them on today's clone style rifles. This style of upper was used on the Colt SP-1 uh, model of AR-15 into the 1980s. Of course, the Colt style would have a larger front push pin it was something Colt did, um, and then obviously that you could buy adapters for that today to adapt them on standard diameter AR-15 and M16 pins. But anyways, so that's that. That was the that was the original. If you look at really old photos and you don't see forward assist or a shell deflector, this was the original style AR-15 M16 upper. All right, next up was. The XM16 E1 style upper, commonly referred to when it went into production as an M16A1 upper receiver. This would come in the late, late 1960s, uh, used throughout the Vietnam War into the early and actually into the mid 1980s and with the U.S. Army, U.S. Marines. Uh, this was this was common. So this was the mainstay. A lot of people like the M16A1 style of upper and the M16A1 style of gun itself. This had the forward assist. This is the addition. This is essentially what the big difference was from the earlier 601 style slab side upper receiver. Um, so it's pretty basic. There, this more or less the same thing except the addition of the forward assist. And you would have the windage adjustable rear sights, just like an M16 or AR-15 original. So pretty tough unit here. This is an older, looks like to be a Martin upper receiver and then progressing on you would have the c style c7 style upper receiver these were made by colt originally and they did not have uh basically they did not change sites they retained the a1 style sites those are not installed obviously and then you would have a, the forward assist just like the a1 this they added the shell deflector. So the Canadian military kind of capitalized on this instead of progressing to the A2 style upper receiver. 
this was what they wanted to go with since they didn't since the a2 sites for uh, in many opinions were or many people's opinions were kind of overdone they, they're overly complicated too much adjustability um, so these retain their windage adjustable sites you would adjust the elevation from the front sight post and then of course your forward assist and your shell deflector for a person shooting off the left shoulder this uh forward or i'm sorry this shell deflector would aid in the empties uh essentially emptying out to the side instead of the empties heading back to their shoulder or face area which would interfere with their operation of the rifle so more or less kind of like an advanced a1 upper and they're kind of neat looking too so that's your c7 upper and on to the A2, early 1980s, the Marines would request a better version of the M16A1. And this was it. This was part of the M16A2. This is the M16A2 style upper receiver. So you notice here, it would have your forward assist. It would have your shell deflector, of course. Standard ejection door with the hump there on it. Of course, standard AR-15 threads. Uh, or upper threads for your barrel and the addition would be that you would have obviously a carry handle and you would have a windage adjustable rear sight as i'm sorry i pointed at the elevation but you had an elevation adjustable rear, rear sight in increments and then you would also have a windage adjustable there so this is kind of a more or less a sight that was built for longer ranges however it wasn't really used a lot for that purpose um, I guess if we're going to shoot a competition, this would be a great site for that because you had windage and elevation and different uh, steps along the way kind of indicating range. So kind of overly complicated. There's a lot of springs and detent balls involved with the assembly, some, uh, you know, your spring pins as well. So not a favorite among many. However, they work. They're pretty tough, but they're susceptible to adjustment. So, or somebody adjusting when they don't need to adjust. So could be an issue for some. However, once again, this is a retro style upper at this point. This is on the M16A2 and that served the Marines and the Army essentially from the early 1980s into the 1990s. And I'm sure there's some, some still out in inventory somewhere out in the military. So, and eventually the U.S. Air Force would update their older style M16 AR-15 rifles into these M16 A2 style uh, weapons, if you will. So that's the M16 A2 upper receiver. And then, of course, today in the 1990s, uh, the M4 style upper, A3 style upper, if you will, would come along. Uh, or in, in the 1990s, these were referred to as the A3 style upper receiver. Uh, they had a Picatinny flat top rail, so the sky was the limit. You could mount basically whatever you wanted to that. Many would start out with a carry handle mounted to them. Since you would screw on there, you could tighten that up with your fingers or a coin, even a screwdriver, and that would give you the advantages of a A2 style rear sight with adjustability. Of course, that could be removed, and you could mount optics or basically anything you wanted to mount on there. So this obviously would have your uh, shell deflector, forward assist, and of course your ejection door. Now, uh, a couple, couple variations came out of these. Uh, some were, when I say M4 upper receiver, that would indicate that they would have the M4 feed ramps. I don't know if we can see it in the lighting right here, but they would have these little feed ramps that would help with the feeding of the M855 uh, round into into the barrel itself to aid in reliability, especially since this essentially was the mainstay upper receiver for the M4 carbine. Uh, being that it had a carbine gas system or a short gas system, it needed a little help with reliability, especially with the newer style ammunition. Now, in, as, uh, as the Marines kind of wanted the M4, I, I think originally, actually it was the Army that kind of went with the M4 as a standard carbine or standard rifle before the Marines kind of implemented uh, the M4 into their uh, service. So, but the Marines in the mid nineties, if I remember correctly, implemented the M16A4. So the M16A4 would use this style of flat top upper. 
However, uh, it would retain all features except for M4 feed ramps. So the M16A4 uppers commonly from FN and Colt did not get the M4 feed ramps since essentially they thought that they didn't need them. Why they did that that way, I, I don't really understand why they would uh, not add the M4 feed ramps. Uh, but anyways, I guess they figured since it had a rifle gas system, they did not need that did not need that feature and they were reliable without the feed ramps. So the, the spec for the M16A4 upper and many of the, if not all of the actual M16A4 uppers on the uh, Colt and FN models do not have the feed ramps, but they have the flat top upper. So once again, standard threading on, uh, you know, for your barrel there for the barrel nut, standard loca locating pinhole for the barrel to locate it upright. But uh, anyhow, Hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's kind of a mess or whatever, but uh, there's all your different M16 uppers that are essentially commonly available. You know, of course, sands, the uh, stuff that you can kind of see out there today, which are like, there's extruded, there's billet, there's the sky's the limit on custom stuff out there. There are actually some uh, out there without forward assist and shell deflectors. So, uh, but everything here is something that the US military would have used at one point or another. Sands the C7. However, the C7 was in use with some of the off-the-shelf carbines that were used by, by the uh, Special Forces community. So some of these 723 style uppers or 727 style uppers even uh, were used in uh, you know different different uh, specialty groups within the U.S. military, but not an actual model, but more of a commercial model that was purchased by the U.S. Uh, Armed Forces anyway. So hope you enjoy the video. It's kind of a neat little explanation on uh, the progression of the AR-15 M16 upper. And I thought I would share these with you and I knew it would be appreciated. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.